I welcome all the viewers and uh, happy Ugadi to all of you. Uh, today's topic is going to be very interesting. We are going to talk about, you know, uh, it's our own topic like gastro and how it is related to obesity. What all are the gastro problems that come with obesity that we see on a daily basis in a lot of people. So today we have with us Dr. Prabhudas, uh, our team and uh, he is also a gastro and a pediatric surgeon. So today we are going together, going to discuss about all the uh, problems that obesity causes in the GI system. So I welcome you Dr. Prabhudas, uh, my little brother. <laughs> So today I am happy that you know uh, we are going to uh, next one month we have uh, come out with lot of interesting topics in our own GI system and we are doing one small campaign on uh, hernia and gallstones. So you will be seeing our team often and uh, see there are uh, three main issues with obesity which in general I would like to tell you guys. Uh, you know how, why we are going on talking so much about obesity previously also I have told in my previous episodes that uh, obesity is the mother of all diseases today I'm going to tell you three things that you need to keep in mind and that is what is going to give you uh, that awareness it is going to give you that motivation that okay come let us you know come down with the weight the first thing is when you put on weight, there is a generalized fat deposition in different organs. I'll give you one simple example. Fat deposition in the neck and the pharynx, especially the posterior part. What happens is when you lie down, it compresses your airway and that is what causes obstructive sleep apnea. A lot of people are not aware that if you have obstructive sleep apnea and if you lose weight, you know your obstructive sleep apnea will be cured completely so that is number one so obesity per se gives problem because of fat deposition like fat deposition in the liver which will give rise to fatty liver we are going to discuss that today in our thing so that is number one the second thing what obesity gives is the mechanical problems mechanical problems means you know when you put on weight the extra weight that uh, happens on the knees when you are walking or when you are jogging or when you are climbing upstairs and the uh, weight related issues that happen to your knees so that is the second effect of obesity it's a mechanical effects you know injury to the joints and uh, bones and because of the weight related issues and number third the most important which not much people are aware of is obesity gives rise to see whenever you have that fat deposition fat adipose tissue it gives rise to a lot of toxic chemicals okay which are all inflammatory factors and that gives increased inflammation inflammation is the key which is related to lot of diseases including lot of cancers so we are going to put all these things together always remember these three things about obesity are killer Okay? And that's the reason all the diseases have the link to obesity. So uh, I'm going to, uh, I want you uh, as a GI specialist to tell people like uh, first of all the main problem with obesity which we see in all the patients is GERD. GERD in common things what we cause is a reflux. Okay? So you can explain them what are the uh, reasons why how obesity is related to reflux and you know how uh, when people lose weight how that reflux symptoms become a little better. Thank you and happy Ugadi to all our viewers and friends. Today it's a generalized gastrointestinal topic and to start with uh, a topic which probably every one of us would have experienced, would have enjoyed and would have complained is reflux. Enjoyed in the sense after a good meal you all take a good burp and you seem to enjoy that particular meal and it is also related as a sign of satiety. People say that once you give a good burp then it means that you are full, you are satisfied with your meal. The hospitality people who serves you food also feels that after a good burp it means they have eaten a good amount of food. That's where you enjoy the food. Anyway, that's the lighter part of it. Next one is 
when you already meet a consultant where you are suffered with a particular same thing when it comes again and again you have a heartburn you have a reflux of either acid or liquid substance or probably food itself it regurgitates sometimes it comes even up to the oral cavity and most of the clinical practice where as gastro surgeons we see it will be mostly reflux it will be the milder form or it will be a severe form and the uh, mostly the uh, modern medicine we either repair or we replace the organ system that is how the entire functionality is but this is one thing where you can reverse it that is what we are trying to emphasize more because you have one area where you can reverse a particular disease where you can keeping one factor setting right you will be able to reverse most of the lifestyle associated disorders mainly to start with this reflex so we don't uh, uh, contemplate the so patients that uh, you you are able to take care of your weight you are able to take care of the particular uh, factor you will be able to not come and meet the consultant often and more or our treatment will be much more effective if you are able to take care of your diet and your weight pattern see what happens is when you eat your food it goes from the oral cavity to the esophagus and it enters the stomach it just imagine it's like a valve it opens again it closes the valve is so tight that it does not allow the food to come up into the esophagus even if you are upside down there is no liquid or food substance that can actually come up so is the blessed ge junction that we call it as the junction between the esophagus and the stomach what happens when because of your overweight or because of your obesity when the fat gets deposited the valve becomes loosened like this so you imagine more amount of adipose tissue getting deposited the valve becomes loose so even though the valve is closed there is always a gap so what happens when people are actually eating to their satiety when they burp or when they have that tendency to little regurgitate stays the normally tight valve loosens so loosening of this valve pushes the acid or the chyme or the already digested food up into the esophagus the poor nature of the esophagus is it does not have the protection to the stomach acids that is why god has given a tight valve so that it automatically gets protected because of reflex when the liquid substance moves up it burns the upper part of the esophagus or lower part where you complain mostly to us as a uh, heartburn they complain that you have a little pain on the um, mild chest region you can even see so many patients going to the cardiology opd and coming back saying that doctor the cardiologist told my heart is normal now it is only the gastroenterologist who has to tell me what is the problem they don't understand that this is a normal physiology which happens only because of the fat cells or the overweight or the obesity which causes the entire thing to move see what happens when you go for a sequent insult of the particular organ when the same reflex happens again and again the lining gets eroded completely when the new cells form that only precursors or predisposes to the precancerous condition that That's is why, why you know why we are going on talking so much about reflux and things like that like hence it has to be treated you know like the lesson goes that any reflux it's not that it's okay just take a ppi and be done with it it's not like that try to do something for your reflux otherwise the chronic irritation as he told will lead to cancers exactly so that's the reason main reason like why you need to treat the reflux now we will come on the most common topic god that was foods you know we see um, almost 50% of our practice is uh, gall bladder stones and we see so much of stones in the gall bladder like yes if you do not have symptoms then nothing has to be done but if you have symptoms then surgery is the option so we will uh, the, today i want you to tell them like uh, relation between obesity and gall bladder stones not that all gall bladder stones are only because of obesity but in general there is a relation between you know overweight increased cholesterol and the gall stones see same thing applies say one one area where you have to understand is adipose tissue is always got the fat cell so when the adipose tissue increases in size it has a tendency to make your entire organ system little more difficult to move around and also it has so much of as she was telling so much of inflammatory markers get more overwhelmed that is another cause for separate subset of disease which we will be discussing in the next uh, few minutes to go gall stones gall bladder is an organ which only stores the bile as we all know bile gets generated from liver overnight gets stored in the gall bladder 
and it's a pear shaped organ which just pushes the bile out into the last part of the stomach namely the uh, duodenum where the uh, fatty food are getting mixed with the bile and there where the along with the pancreatic juice enhances in the digestion of the chyme which is coming from the stomach and also the fatty food what happens when you put overall weight fatty liver which was a condition which was probably not even cared about 10 years back they said ultrasound all ultrasound gives fatty livers and now when the people are able to experience the non alcoholic fatty livers leading to liver failures and that only causes so much of liver cirrhosis and liver transplant surgeons are really facing a tough time because there, there is a myth or there is a fact saying that you are an alcoholic liver goes for a failure goes for a cirrhosis then you have to transplant no non alcoholic people are even lining up in the queue for liver transplant yes. you have to understand the basic uh, funda where even the people who have never uh, touched alcohol who have never uh, been to any of its, your uh, vice conditions are going into a last stage of liver transplant which means there is something basically everybody yes. are missing that is what we are trying to Previously push it was it. not so much it was not the way it is increasing the prevalence of obesity has increased and all the obesity related diseases also have increased you know so so what happened when the liver fat deposit more the bile also becomes more thicker so when the more thick bile comes and stores in the gallbladder the gallbladder access is not able to push the entire bile out into the circulation it so precipitates. it precipitates so once it precipitates and you know that the fat doesn't deposit only in the liver everywhere in the blood as uh, now was telling the cholesterol will be more so what happens when it all aggregates it forms stones cholesterol stones and when the stones get obstructed only you get pain but you don't understand when there is no proper functioning of gallbladder itself patient come up saying that i have a fullness i have bloating yes. and i have uh, problems with my digestion and i don't know what are all boss more and when we do an ultrasound and when we come up saying that you have got symptoms which is not related to pain but it is gallstones we actually find it difficult to even convince the patient that the gallbladder organ has to be considered in treatment because they say i i have stone but you only told we have stones process i don't have any problem other than not able to digest my heavy meal that is a predominant complaint they don't understand patients and it is us we have to open up all these forums and make them understand that the basic cholesterol basic overweight basic obesity which causes increase in the adipose tissue more of fat deposit everywhere also happens in liver because of which the incidence of gallstones have increased in the years no i was just remembering like you know two days back um, somebody was telling me that why you are doing so much we keep on doing something or the other thing and when people ask see basically obesity we are into weight loss and gastroesophageal right so we are into that but then uh, like the other person like he was telling me that what is your problem you are getting more business because of all this thing so what is your problem but you know our problem is not that we are not uh, we are not happy to keep continuing doing this work we are, it is not that we are happy on somebody's disease you know so i was just telling if all of a sudden god decides that okay fine from tomorrow no more diseases on earth i am very happy to change our profession you know we will be very happy so we are doing this awareness programs because we don't want you to get into problems once you get into problem you have nothing to say you get a bad reflux and still mild reflux moderate reflux you lose weight you will be all right but then call better stones if the call better is not functioning full of stones you will end up only in surgery uh, liver cirrhosis like as he told fatty liver will lead to nash that is non alcoholic steatohepatitis hepatitis and it will lead to cirrhosis it will lead to liver failures once you get into that then you do not have anything to come back it's all irreversible so whatever all these things are reversible that's the reason we are going on doing this program so i want you to start thinking that okay fine let me start doing something about the way now the most important topic i was just uh, nowadays in our country also we see a lot of people with uh, ipd mean, inflammatory bowel diseases it's very common in us like increasing prevalence of obesity has got increased incidences of inflammatory bowel diseases also inflammatory bowel diseases means you get some you know colicky pain in the abdomen followed by loose motion sometimes blood in motion mucus in motion so you can just little bit tell them about relation of you know obesity and this ibd inflammatory bowel diseases so, uh, the the same uh, condition 
when it occurs in various parts of the body we call it a different different disease pattern as such as if it happens in liver when it is liver is going for inflammatory pathology the name uh, disease is different same thing when it happens in your intestines and that is where you call it as an irritable bowel because as i was previously telling the fat cells have such so much of inflammatory markers and response it constantly irritates your entire wall of the intestine and that in particular intestine i mean <clears throat> it is not that people put on weight irrespective of the very healthy and the very judicious eating pattern and the lifestyle it's the other way where the eating pattern is on not on a very healthy side and they also do not uh, have a very good lifestyle problem so the uh, fat cells are the most intelligent cell in our body where it can uh, multiply on its own almost more than the magnitude where any cells you can imagine in the body so what happens it goes into all the parts of your entire intestine and the uh, part of the intestine which has to necessarily digest your food absorb all the nutrients goes in for a decreased functionality and this inflammation causes so much of patchy irritation all over the intestine that only causes to the fat is an endocrine organ that's exactly. what people have to understand you know fat is an endocrine organ till now we are thinking that fat is a simple noble innocent fat uh, cell it's not like that it's an endocrine organ so it means that it releases a lot of pro inflammatory cytokines and things like that which are responsible for so much of inflammation so as as uh, consultants we will be first able to uh, diagnose a problem then give you a symptomatic relief for the damage which will be already available with all our medical management but the reason why we are going on contemplating this particular kind of thing is a system where you viewers common public can reverse or control the entire body from head to toe is a gastrointestinal system because food is is always in your control that is the input that almost functions all your entire system if your eye power is little less like you we will not be able to reverse it at any point of time if you are out of hearing but like any other system for that matter you will not be able to control directly but gastrointestinal system you only controls that yeah, only gives important. input to all the other systems so when there is inflammation in your bowel when you have a bad tummy when you have some diarrhea when you have a little pain bloating we will be able to symptomatically relieve your bloating we will be able to symptomatically bring your pain under control and we will be able to give a temporary relief fine after that 5 days you come back to the opd and you say doctor i am feeling much better i am happy i am thankful to you and you again walk back but you don't realize the reason of the programming is after you walk out of the consultation soon it is you who have to take care of the damage intestine which has created a problem one week back it is you who is responsible for your intestinal problem in not coming back again as she said we'll be happy or we'll be definitely with open doors welcoming patients who are the suffering and we are there to uh, give you a uh, relief for your suffering but it doesn't mean that you can shed your responsibilities and shift it on to the consultants and say the doctor my health is your concern my health is your responsibility no your health is your primary concern that is the reason why we are trying to push all these ideas into your mentality and make you realize that you should be in charge of your health so the last uh, topic cancers. is ye cancers and uh, we see a lot of uh, colorectal cancers nowadays breast cancers nowadays endometrial cancers so there are lot of uh, relation between obesity and this cancers you know so little bit you can talk about so the gi cancers how it is related actually when when we were in our uh, uh, medical schooling it was told that the colorectal cancers were more prevalent in the western world and in indian population since we don't have so much of constipation our bowel habits are relatively better we don't see much of colon cancer that was our teaching and that was what was given in the books and all this uh, literature evidences it is true also the colorectal cancer is one of the higher incidences in western population and there has been a very interesting study where our indian population when it settles in us over a generation their incidence of colorectal cancers almost are on the higher rise and equal compared to the western population because of their western lifestyle and their exposure to the food habits where they almost which means very clearly 
our uh, Indian subcontinent is blessed with the overall atmosphere, with the food habits that has a natural uh, protection to your uh, cancers of the colon in particular. But off late, because of the modernization, westernization and the food habits change, entire uh, blow on and you, you call up, you will be able to get whatever cuisines in your plate. And uh, it has almost increased in the last yes. COVID period where I don't think anybody is switching on their stoves and kitchens for that matter. And it's only microwaves that get switched on just to reheat and overheat the delivered food, not the cooked food. So the uh, colorectal cancers, what happens is, for that matter, the entire GA cancers are slightly on the higher race, even in our Indian subcontinent, over probably 20 years or 30 years uh, interval. And of last decade, we would say, we have we been seeing see so, so much, much of so much. cancers. And, and, and mind you, it is not that easy to fight a cancer. It is told in bold letters, cancer is curable, cancer patients has to come out and all. so many campaigns are happening on the cancer side, but it is to very uh, promisingly, we are, we are open mind, we are telling you, it is a very, very dreadful battle to bat both on the patient side and also on the surgeon side. Although the prevention is better, better than cure. So that's what we are trying to tell you. And one disease where you can always reverse it, where you can always prevent it, where you can always take it on the positive side is overweight and obesity. And when you know that the prevalence of cancer is going to be higher because what is cancer is nothing but when the cell which goes into an insult, for instance, a layer of cell dies because of various reasons. Again, it forms a new cell. It dies. It forms a new cell. That is our genesis. For instance, the same finger I had it during my birth is the same. Like my index is the same for the last <coughs> 40 years or more. But the size is different. The morphology, everything is in. Where was this small finger which I had during my birth? It is not there. It is changed. Which means the cell dies, new cell comes. And our growth happens in our body for every organ for the matter. Same thing, when the inflammatory, for instance, the cell that is forming is a defective cell, then again that dies, more defective cell comes. That is the main cause for a cancer cell to form. That is the genesis. And this fat cell has the very high percentage that they can cause so much of insult to the newly forming yeah, cell. Yeah, the cytokines, that, you know, they are all uh, precancerous. So, when it again forms, the new cell that has formed is also a cancer cell. Once a cancer cell is formed, it multiplies and it spreads. That's that's the basic, simple uh, terminology where public is able to understand. So, will you be able to stop a cancer cell multiplying? No. Will you be able to stop the cancer cell from entering the blood cells? No. Will you be able to cancer it invading the vital organs of the body? No. Where you can stop these cancer cells? When the normal cells are getting an insult because of the overweight and the, the fat cells, that is where you will be able to stop it. That is the time where you will be able to reverse it and getting the new cells into its picture. How do you get a new cells? It is by your way of lifestyle. It is your way of uh, factors where you yeah. have so given. Basically, it is uh, two things that are responsible for increased uh, incidences of, especially when we uh, talk about colorectal cancers. Okay, one thing is the inflammation that fat tissues give. Okay, so that is one thing, which is the inflammatory factors that the uh, uh, fat cells release they are all precancerous okay so that is one thing and second thing recently uh, not recently probably last year one nice article came like uh, our indian south indian sambar reduces the risk of colorectal cancer why it's only because of lot of fibers inside okay the way our food pattern is it is full of fibers so i would request all the people please get into the age old habit what our ancestors used to eat you know a uh, lot of fibers and a lot of vegetables, a lot of greens and pulses. This is what is going to keep your gut healthy. So, friends, we will end the... Word, yeah. uh, the turmeric that yeah. we add into the particular ingredient has high level of curcumin. Yes. The curcumin has to... Has it high reduces the inflammation. inflammation. Yes. And that has been proven curcumin, in both yes. in the COVID time period yes, also. Yes. And that's the main reason why yes. our uh, ingredients are naturally... See, why we are pushing in our particular area is India and uh, South India or North India, whatever it is, we have a blessed uh, tropical atmosphere where we have a blessed food pattern which is available in our native uh, places. So, if we, we, we only have the highest in possibility where we will be able to fight that disease much better than compared to the western population. 
So friends, we'll end the session. It was uh, quite interesting today. So I hope you will learn a lot of things and you get, you get motivated. Start working out, start walking at least outside, you know, and start uh, eating home cooked food with more fibers and uh, healthy fats. So we'll end the session today. Uh, we'll catch up again next week with one, another interesting uh, topic and uh, uh, friends this whole year we have dedicated to obesity because we are running a mission called Healthier Chennai, Better Chennai. So you will see a lot of interesting topics further. Thank you so much for joining Dr. Prabhudas. Thank you so much.